Hello everyone, I am Neelna Manoj Maya and today I am here to speak about crash recovery mechanism and the ADs algorithm. So before we move on to such complicated terms and concepts, let's just get a brief idea of what a database is and what is a database management system. So as we all know, database basically refers to a large collection of data, it's a bulk voluminous amount of data which is usually pertaining to a particular enterprise, an institution, an organization and so on. And the main key feature of data in a database is that the data is always interrelated to each other and is stored in a sequential, organized manner which has logical semantics to it. So, database is having data and we need a software design with which we can actually access the data, modify it, operate on it, manage it and so on. Thus came the development of a database management system. So database management system is a software which was designed to modify, alter, create new schemas and tables etc. on the data which is stored in the database. Now if you see over here, there are different ways in which data in a database can be stored. There is a relational database, hierarchical database, you have object database and so on. And the most upcoming and emerging form of database module or schema is the relational database, where data is stored in the form of tables or schemas rather, which has attributes as the columns and um, rows as the tuples. Now, if you see, database has got different subset languages like DNL, DDL, DDL, that is data manipulating language, data definition language, etc. These are subset languages of database management system which help in modifying the table, which help in creating new tables in the database and so on. Now, this basically refers to the internal interpretation of data stored in the database. You have three levels. There's the physical level, there's the logical level and you have the external or the view level. So if you consider the case of the physical level, it's the lowermost level which is completely hidden from the users and the external viewers. It mainly contains the aspects of data storage as in the disk indexing, disk storage, etc. Then comes the logical level or the conceptual level. So logical level or conceptual level mainly refers to the interconnect or interrelation within the data which is stored in a particular database. And then you have the view or the external level. Now as you can see you have different number of views. These views or external levels basically cater to the needs of the user. So based on the necessities of the user, each view will be different. The view which I would need based on my queries will be completely different from that of another person. And before I forget, logical level mainly consists of query optimizer, transaction processor, transaction manager and things like that. And also they have data independence, uh, levels of data independence. That is, if you make any modification to the data which is stored in the physical level, it will not affect the data which is stored in the logical level. Similarly, making any change in the logical level will not affect the data which is stored in the view or the external level. Now this is basically a brief description of how data can be stored in a database and this is with respect to a college. So in a college you have departments and you have infrastructure. Under department you have course, teachers, students. From the course again you have applications of theory and labs. Moving on, let's first define what exactly is a system crash. Now system crash mainly refers to an ambiguous or anomalous behavior which is uh, executed by a particular system and it is highly undesirable. Why is that so? Because when a system crash occurs, any transaction or ongoing process which was occurring during the time of system crash will not reach its level of completion or will not be completed successfully. So it is highly likely that all the data which was stored in the system can get lost, it can be easily leaked and retrieved by other unauthorized users and there are so many other complications. Also another main thing which we need to notice is that since database mainly pertains to data which is highly confidential and has data in large voluminous amounts, losing such amounts of data is highly, highly risky and it's not easy to retrieve them back again if you not have a proper backup or any recovery mechanism. Now 
Now, there are many reasons as to why a system crash can occur. A few of them are listed here. One is the power failure. Like if there is a sudden abrupt uh, stoppage to the power supply due to a particular system or machine. Very often system crashes or system failures do occur. Then it can be due to the malfunctioning of any software or hardware devices. And last but not least, an operating system error which is quite common these days. So that's about system crashes. Now we want to crash a database recovery. So from the brief description of system crash, we can actually formulate as to why we need a recovery for this. Because as I said, database it has large amounts of data, all of the data being highly confidential, highly pertaining to a particular organization or establishment. And for that particular institution, using such amounts of data, it's definitely like putting their lives on scale. So that's the main reason as to why we need a database recovery. Now, database recovery involves a lot of processes. The main principle of recovery is to restore or recover the data in the database due to data losses which can occur due to system crash, due to hacking, due to viruses and so on. Now, if one thing which has to be noted is that data in the database should always be accessible. It should be easily accessible, easily retrievable and for that we need to ensure that data is in its completely integrated or consistent state. When a system crash or system failure occurs, there are high chances that processes or transactions which were happening at that point of time are not complete and hence it can lead to uh, lossage of data, anatomicity of data and loss of data integration. So if the database is left in that kind of situation, then it completely spoils the entire point of why we need a database. This data is no more easily accessible. So that's one of the main reasons as to why we need a data recovery so that we can take back the data which was in its spoiled state to its initial original state where it's completely perfect and complete. And the um, recovery mechanism should be such that it always rolls back all the processes and the transactions to its initial or original state of completeness. Now you can see here, uh, this was the initial database okay? and there was the, it's like a backup database platform. Now if you see the next picture, because of a system crash or system failure or some kind of malfunctioning, there, ha there is database or data in the database which is not committed and those which are committed. We come to what is a committed and uncommitted transaction soon. But this database is not something which is desirable because it has data in its committed and uncommitted form. We need data only in the committed form, only then will it be integrated and consistent. And when you roll back the segments with the help of crash recovery mechanisms and suitable algorithms, you will get back the database in its completely consistent and integrated form, which is exactly like how we want it. Now, if you see this, this picture, it's basically pointing to the classification of failures. There are different types of failures. We are mainly focusing on system failures and crashes. But one of the main failures is transaction failures. And these transaction failures depend on the processes or transactions that are being operated on the data, which is stored in the database. And they can be divided uh, into two levels. That's the logical error and the system error. Moving on. So, since we've discussed as to what is a system crash and why we need a crash recovery, let's now move on to one of the recovery mechanisms. That one important, flexible and highly unique mechanism is the ARIES algorithm. ARIES actually stands for Algorithm for Recovery and Isolation Exploiting Semantics. You have many, many algorithms which can be used for crash recovery, but this is one of the most important and succulent ones in the field of database management system. The main reason as to why this often becomes the striking algorithm out of all of them is because simple to work with, easy to manage and is a steel no force approach to mechanism. Now when we say steel no force, we can understand it in this picture. Crash recovery algorithms can be divided as non-atomic and atomic. When I say non-atomic, it means that you do not and you do require the process of undo. And undo process or update combination process are further divided into steel or no force and steel or force. Steel or no force requires the implementation of the 
So when we say that baby's algorithm is a steel robust mechanism, we may be implied that baby's algorithm requires a redo process as well as an upgrade process. Now if you come into baby's algorithm, there are three main processes which are involved, which is the analysis phase, the redo phase and the upgrade phase. Let's get into them. But before we move on, let's just check the three main principles which underlie the ABS algorithm. The first one is right ahead logging. Now, right ahead logging mainly refers to the action of recording each and every change, update, or modification that is likely to take place before it is completed. So, when you log or record something before an action takes place, you're going to ensure that even if the action does not complete, we always have the log record to look back into. Is the log, I mean, is the action completed? Is it only half completed? Has it reached its final status in session? All of that is extremely helpful if we apply the process of right ahead logging. The second principle is repeating history during period. Now, once a system crash or a system failure occurs, definitely, once the entire process is done, the system is to be restarted for backup and re collection of data. Now, on every restart which accompanies a particular crash, definitely the system is bound to retrace all the transactions or processes which were active during the time of crash. Now, suppose if a system crashed at a certain point A, and the, uh, after the crash was over, the system was restarted, and uh, during the process of restart, again the system crashed at a point B. So, what happens is, at the point A, once the system crashed and when it was restarted the first time, some amount of transactions would have already been restored. So, once that is restored, we need to do it again right from scratch during the second restart. So, that needs to be written or logged somewhere else. So, that during the second restart, only the incomplete transactions or processes are redone. So, that's the main key um, concept behind repeating history during redo. And it's one of the most striking features which actually leads to Aries algorithm being the most successful and highly implemented one. And the third one is basically logging the changes during the process of undo. We will be looking into what is redo and undo process. So before that, logging changes during undo. Whatever change is being made to the database during the process of undo, they are also recorded and logged to prevent the repetition during a next system crash or next, next system restart. Before we move on to the high base concept of ABS algorithm, let's just familiarize ourselves with a few terms. First term is log. Now log is similar to train or journey and it mainly contains a history or a detailed description of all the actions, transactions or processes which have been taking place in a successful and complete manner. And usually the logs are proven to survive any kind of a database or system crash or system failure. So even if the data from the database has been erased or retrieved by unauthorized means, you can always refer to the log to collect the original and actual data. And if you are even doubtful if the log also gets erased, then what is our other option? You can always maintain two to three copies of the log in different storage devices. Now, log chain is another term which often accompanies logs. It mainly um, indicates the recent portion of the log, that is all the activities which have taken place in a recent manner that is appended to that of the log and that portion is called as the log chain. And what it does is the log chain is often stored in the main memory and then it is post written into that of the disk or the permanent storage. Every log record has got a particular unique ID and this unique ID is called as a log sequence number. Uh, it's highly essential because it's very easy to retrieve the particular log from huge lists of log records in the case of system crashes. So if you have a log sequence number for every week log, you can easily retrieve them and access them. Now there are a few reasons as to why logs are written. One of the main reasons why logs are written is process of updation. When you need to update data, you always have to look back into the data which was initially stored. So if you have logs, they are highly helpful. Second is the process of 
commit. Now, when a transaction is said to be committed, it basically force rights, that is, compulsory rights, a log record, and it is then appended to the log jail, and then it is written into the state storage. So, since I mentioned in the beginning of the class as to what is log and what is uh, commit, so commit basically refers to the process of compulsory writing a particular log record in the main memory and then upgrading its storage to that of the permanent memory or the permanent disk storage. And another reason as to why we need logs is undoing an update. For updation also we need log and at the same time if we want to undo an or an abort an update we also need a log because when a particular transaction is logged back all of its updates are going to be undone because of which there will be a corresponding compensation log record which is written. There will be another log record which keeps a collection of all the logs or actions which have been undone and that's what's referred to as a compensation log record. So there are three main reasons as to why we need a log for updation, for undoing an update and in the process of comment. Another important concept is write-ahead log protocol. We saw that write-ahead logging is an important of the ARIES algorithm. It has a few rules and regulations and protocols which are assigned or accompanied with it. Before we write any page, page basically refers to a huge collection of log records or past actions and upcoming actions. So before it is written on for disk, all the update log records have to be forced into the stable storage. Only if it is updated in the stable storage can we assure or ensure that the storage of this is in a proper, consistent and integral manner. This can be accomplished with the help of the log sequence number, which is a unique ID which is given to every log record. And the importance of uh, write ahead logging can actually be significantly seen when we consider the case of recovering or retrieving the data during the time of system crash or system failure. And logs are usually maintained in a sequential format. Even the writings, they are done in a very sequential, semantic, and organized manner. Now, one of the last terms, which is checkpoints. Now, checkpoint basically is a mechanism wherein all the previous logs, they are removed from the system and they are stored permanently in the storage chest. This, just like how we have the comment function. Checkpoint basically refers to a point or that particular instance of the entire page or log record wherein all the other logs or the all, all the preceding logs have been upgraded to the permanent storage, that's the disk storage. Now, it basically declares this particular point as a checkpoint. So, a point of checkpoints is basically considered to be in its completely consistent, systematic and semant semantically arranged manner. And all the transactions are to be committed if a point meets the checkpoint. Now, if you consider, there are different types of checkpoints. You have the begin checkpoint, which indicates the start of this procedure. You have the end checkpoint, which indicates the completion of this procedure. And you have the fuzzy checkpoint. It basically considers all the transactions which were active during the process of a system crash or a system failure or after the checkpoint. Then they are processed in the case of this particular crash, while all the other transactions which were carried out before them are it read out. Now we move on to the three phases of the ARIES algorithm. There are three phases, that's analysis, redo and undo. So analysis phase is the first phase. As the name suggests, analysis phase refers to the procedure or mechanism through which the implemented algorithm is going to analyze, search and scrounge for all possible dirty pages. Dirty pages mainly includes all the imprinted pages which has data and is inconsistent which is not integrated and so on. It determines the point in the log where the redo process has to be there. So it mainly looks out for all these kinds of anomalies which are present in the data and it tries to find out that, that particular point from which the crash had occurred, from which the redo process has to begin. And uh, it spots all the activities and transactions which were active during the time of the system crash. Why is that so? Let's take an example. We have two people, say A and B. Now A has to transfer some amount of money from his account to that of B's account. So he goes to his bank or ATM. He uh, retrieves or he debits the amount from his account and he is undergoing the process of 
transferring it to B's account. Right at that particular point of time, a system crash and a system failure occurs. So when the system B starts, this is the information which is going to be available in both the accounts. In system A's account, the amount has been debited. In system B's account, the amount has not yet been credited. So this is a complete inconsistent state of data in the database and it needs to be removed or rectified by rolling back this process which was active during the time of system crash. So it is the duty of this analysis phase of the algorithm to identify the processes which were active during the time of system crash so that the redo process can be initiated. And at the end of this analysis phase, you will actually get a list of all the active transactions which wouldn't have been completed successfully due to the system crash, a list of all the dirty pages and so on. Moving on to the next phase, which is the redo phase. Now, during this phase, the main aim of the algorithm is to reapply all the transactions which weren't completed and to ensure that whether they are committed or not committed and to ensure that they are in the committed state. Now, this repeating history paradigm, we did see that one of the main principles of uh, the ADS algorithm was repeating history due to the redo process. Now, this paradigm is what distinguishes uh, ADS algorithm from every other form of recovery mechanism because it's very, very useful when you consider the retrieval of data from a crash system. And all the transactions are redone except for those which belong to the dirty pages because they, the data in the dirty pages are not required anymore. They can be easily eradicated and erased. So apart from the data which is stored in a data page, a data dirty page, all the other data details and transactions and processes will be redone. And uh, they can be easily accessed with the help of their log sequence number. And there's also a mechanism through which you check out the log sequence number as to which one is being correspondingly identified for the time being. By checking the log sequence number is greater than the one which is being checked. If that's the case, then it's good that, that particular transaction will not be considered. All the log sequence numbers of those logs which are less than the current one being checked, they will be greater. And then coming to the last phase, which is the undo phase. Now, undo phase basically works on the transaction table which has been formed by the log sequence number phase. That's the redo phase. So, after the end of every phase, you will get a transaction table. Initially, after the analysis phase, we got a table consisting of all the active transactions, the dirty pages, etc. After the redo phase, we got a table consisting of all the log sequence numbers. And now we have the undo phase which completely depends on the table which is formed by the else phase. Going to identify those transactions which are the loser transactions, as in those which were of system crash or system failure, and all the actions of the loser transaction they are to be undone. And when they are being undone, they are always done in the reverse order. So, if you consider this example, let the set of all law sequence values belong to a particular set, then we to undo. Now, this set is going to be completely processed until that particular set becomes empty. Only then can we say that all the possible transactions which weren't completed successfully have been redone and undone and have taken the data in the database to its original, consistent and integrated form. So if you see this, you have the beginning checkpoint. Okay, there are two updates which are taking place. There's an update T1 and there's an update T2. Now the user wants the T1 updates to be aborted. So the T1 is aborted. So T1 update no longer exists. And then T3 update has taken place and again you have a T2 update and after which a crash happens. Now after the crash follows the restart, when the undo begins due to the implementation of the ADS algorithm, first T2 is undone, then T3 is undone. It is why first T1 was updated but then it later got reported. So we don't want to talk about T1. Then we had T2, we had T3 and T2. So when you are undoing the process, it's going to go in the complete reverse manner. You're going to have T2, T3 and T2. So that's basically a whole viewpoint of what is a crash recovery mechanism and the ADS algorithm. Let's just take a quick summary of what we did in today's class. We started off with what is a database and what is a database management system. We then moved on to a system crash, what system crash is, how it can occur. Further, we talked about uh, what is uh, the need for a crash recovery mechanism and we 
you chose one most important and unique algorithm, which is Aries algorithm. We talked about the three phases which are involved in Aries algorithm, which is the analysis phase, the redo phase, and the undo phase. And it is this redo phase or the repeating history due to redo process pathway, which uh, makes Aries algorithm a very striking uh, mechanism. And then we talk about a few points which are related to any crash recovery mechanism, which is log, log sequence number, checkpoint, right-handed logging, right-handed logging protocol, and so on. So I hope you all got a brief idea of crash recovery mechanism and the ABs algorithm. Thank you.